What's up, folks? We're back. We're looking at the Dead Reckon Ridgeback. This is a USA-made knife. It's an integral with a titanium frame, bag and a cut blade with a kind of a acid wash on it, and uh, it's a button lock. Very, very interesting knife. Definitely its own aesthetic, kind of funky looking. Um, and this was sent in to me by a friend to check out. Um, I got it in yesterday. I've been kind of fidgeting around with it, and I, I have mixed feelings, man. I cannot tell if I actually like this or not. But regardless, it is very interesting, and I'm really happy that I got to check it out, um, regardless of what my final opinion is. So let's check it out. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Look down there. Make sure you are, please. So this is an integral, and this is actually the first titanium integral that I've... Um, like gotten to really handle and it is cool man it is really cool to have this one solid piece this milling is pretty nice um kind of like these flowy lines the uh, i'm guessing this is a yeah, yeah yeah this is a filler tab i guess right the pocket clip is very weird um not deep carry you know you had a, a pretty lot sticking out of your pocket very, i like the size i like small clips um, and it actually works well in and out of your pocket. It's actually not touching the scale, which is weird. I'm not sure if, if they're all like that. I'm probably not. I don't know. Um, but this thing here is the weird, weirdly shaped filler tab because of this triangular shape. That's the shape of the filler tab, I guess. And the hardware must be on the inside. Um, which, how do you even get to that? You know what? Okay, this screw must go all the way through into the clip, because that's the only way you would get to it, since it's an integral, and there's no hardware visible inside. Interesting. So this is a button lock. Um, the button itself is pretty large, and I'm glad, because this spring is heavy. Um, you can tell, compared to other button locks, it takes more strength to push it in. Not like a, a lot of strength to where it's uncomfortable at all. But I can tell that this is a very powerful spring. Um, also, it's kind of cool. The The pivot is very interesting. And I, I have not taken it apart, and I probably won't. But look closely at this hardware here. It's actually rotating with the blade. Does that on both sides. So somehow, whatever is going on in here, the blade tang is affixed to the pivot. Um, I don't I don't even see any bearings in there, which is... Uh, the bearings are probably actually inside the tang itself. And then the button has a slot in it, and the tang rotates through that slot. Um, very interesting. Um, it, you know, the, and it actually creates a pretty freaking good detent. I mean, look at this. As far as button locks go, this is a this is a good detent. Um, I wouldn't call it like we cube it strong because you know, as you know, the we cube it is now the benchmark of how a button lock should feel because this is the stiffest detent on a button lock I've ever felt. Um, so it's not quite we cube it strong, but it is a much better detent than a lot of other button locks I've tried. However, it is not that smooth on the drop. Um, it's almost like if you push the button as hard as you can, you're pushing it too much. And if you kind of push it a little bit lighter, sometimes it falls a little better. It's just, it's a little inconsistent, which is weird. I don't know. It's just, I've never experienced a pivot like this, so I guess maybe I'm just trying to get used to it. Um, yeah, it's just it's a weird feeling. Uh, the flipper tab has uh, some nice jimping around it. It's a pretty prominent uh, flipper tab. You get some good leverage on it, and um, I can feel it. But I can also easily flick it out. So, yeah, pretty pretty nicely. 
Now the the hole is a little high, um, in, in my opinion. I think oh, that will be the, most people's opinion. When you go to reverse flick it, it just the hole feels a little high. Like when you want to reverse flick, your your finger goes down here, like it wants to be down here. So what end up ends up happening is you don't have as much leverage when you're higher up towards the pivot than you would down further. So it's kind of not very fun to reverse flick. It's it's doable. It requires more strength than um, maybe you would prefer. Uh, thumb flick, a little more doable actually than the reverse flick. The hole seems to be in a better position for a thumb flick rather than reverse flick. But again, it's doable. It's just, it requires some muscle and um, you would have better leverage down further. So, you know, they, they made the detent um, stiff enough to where it's pretty good with the flipper tab, but it's slightly strong for the position of the hole on the reverse flick. Um, let's talk about the blade. This is a sheep's foot blade, a very kind of funky looking blade. Um, and this thing is ground extremely thick. I have never seen a knife with a thicker measurement behind the edge. I measured it last night at 45 thousandths. That's like, I think the thickest behind the edge I ever measured was, I think like a Benchmade Griptilian, which was, I, I wanna say like 28 thousandths maybe. So it's significantly thicker than the thickest thing I've ever measured. Forty-six thousandths. Now the the previous the the current owner said that he did sharpen it, so it might have gotten slightly thicker than when it was from factory. But looking at pictures, the edge bevel doesn't seem to be much uh, sh um, skinnier um, in, in the pictures. So I don't think he widened it out very much at all. And I asked him if it was crazy thick before he sharpened it too, and he said, "Yeah, it definitely was." So. Um, Regardless, even if it did get a little thicker, I mean, 45 thousandths, actually 46 thousandths, unbelievably thick. Uh, the blade stock thickness is not crazy thick, 140 thousandths, um, but man, it's a thick grind, and you could feel it, just, you know, feeling the blade, it just, it feels insanely thick, insanely, th I mean, you can just look right down here. and see how thick it is behind that edge. So, um, you know, <laughs> I, I just don't know what to say, man. Like, I, I guess they don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's just thick. It's really thick, and I'm not sure why. Um, there's, the, as far as the blade shape, I think it's, it's a pretty good shape for, you know, utility stuff. You got a low tip for when you want to get to utility cuts, but you got the belly to kind of rock back on. Um, almost a little harpoon notch dealio here for your thumb, or you can be back here where there's a little ridge, almost like a, uh, I don't know, para three, almost hump dealio back here with jimping on it. And then there's a nice, generous forward finger choil slash choke up spot, um, which is actually very comfortable up here. Nice and comfy. Um, Choked back, pretty comfy too. I don't feel any hot spots, uh, just, just gripping the knife right here. Um, this, I could foresee possibly being a hot spot. This is a, it's not sharp, but it is definitely an edge. It's not been very broken here. Um, but even if I grip the knife as hard as I can right now, I don't feel it, so it might not be an issue at all. Um, yeah, you know, this is just a weird one. Um, very weird. Now, it's very cool that it's USA made. Obviously, I love that. Um, and it's it's a decent price, too. There's also aluminum ones, which are cheaper. This is the titanium one. Um, and I don't know exactly how much they are. I'll put a link down below. It'll take you right there. You can go look. Um, but I, I, I remember I was, not, uh, I was not offended by the price. For being American-made integral button lock, I was like, wow, that's actually pretty good. So that's cool. Um... Personally, I don't see myself buying one of these. I just don't. Um, 
if I somehow got one for a crazy good deal or someone gave one to me, I, it would be cool to have in the collection just because it's kind of funky and like, I don't know, cool and it, cool in like a funky, weird way. Um, I, I would not, I would not spend money on this though for me. Now, if you love the design, then yeah, you, you'll probably be pretty happy with it. You might want to get it reground unless you're just fine with it being pretty thick. You know, it'll still cut, absolutely. It's not going to be as slicey as a lot of other knives, but it'll work, you know. Um, it, it's it's weird. <laughs> it's, it's just weird is the bottom line. Very funky design. Now, I will say the handle is very locked-in feeling because, you know, we kind of it kind of comes out here uh, to a, a point. So you're kind of locked in, in in both directions from sliding off or sliding up on the blade. Um, so that's, that's a kind of a nice feeling. Um, I like that. Um, very interesting. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you think it looks good, um, think it looks weird. If you'd buy one, if you have bought one already, um, let me know your thoughts. Um, also it is pretty off center, pretty significantly off center. Um, sorry, I forgot to silence myself. Um, so anyways, there you go. Um, yeah, some very interesting kind of cool stuff going on here, here with the pivot, the way the button is, you know, it's an integral. So a lot of cool stuff, also some weird stuff and some not so good stuff. So there you go. That's my opinion of the dead wreck and Ridgeback. Um, like I said, leave me a comment and like the video before you head out. I'd appreciate it. And I will see you later.